All right. So The Mandalorian mm-hmm. Season 3 has wrapped up. Okay. Okay? Okay. It's wrapped a Lorian. Yeah. I'm going to spoil it. Okay. I know you don't care. I absolutely but do But others not care. might if you do want to skip ahead. Also, like, I know enough about Star Wars that when I go on to Twitter and there are Mandalorian, like, I can just... You from figure context, it out. I can figure out what happened, basically. Exactly. Okay, so this is spo- spoiler territory from now on. Yeah. I thought uh, – I didn't like this – I didn't love the season, I should say, overall. I think the previous two were stronger. Uh-huh. I think, though, there were some weird little standalone episodes, which I did like. I know there was a big hullabaloo because Lizzo and Jack Black were in an episode briefly. Oh, yes. uh-huh. That was my favorite episode of the season. Now, what is the premise of that episode? That one, they go to a weird – former Imperial planet, which is like this beautiful paradise utopia now. Mm-hmm. because The, the whole, Mandalorian and Mandalorian Grogu. and Grogu and uh, Bo-Katan. Uh-huh. And Christopher Lloyd's in it. And for some reason the robots, some of them every now and then are going rogue and like hurting, killing okay. people and whatever. Uh-huh. So the administrators of the city, which is Jack Black and Lizzo, mm-hmm. task the Mandalorian with figuring out what's going on. Mm. So they just do a little detective noir thing, like okay. it's going to different bars and speaking of robots and fitting. They have like a little okay. foot chase through the city and oh, whatever. I love it. And it was really cool. A foot chase in the style of the Book of Boba Fett. Exactly. Of that level of quality. That's what it felt like. Terrific. So I know a lot of people didn't like that one. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And it had its own weird kind of inconsistent mm. logic to it, which yeah, I enjoyed yeah. as well. Does Jack Black sing the song Mando, 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 he Mando, sing, Mando? He sings the Mando song, yes. Right, that's great. Uh, but I think the overall story <laughs> for the season was I found pretty underwhelming in terms of like how they finished up things that had come before and how they kind of – it kind of wraps up the whole arc of The Mandalorian. It okay. feels like a – at least the oh, end Oh, as of, if there was never going to be – if there's never going to be another season. Yeah, perhaps, which there – Potentially, but, but there will I mean, be. he'll at the very least show up in other stuff, but yeah. Mm. So I think the action in this, there's some pretty good stuff in it. Like there's a, they retake Mandalore at one point and there's like the sky is full of Mandalorians fighting stormtroopers with jetpacks and shit. Oh my God, would I recognize some of them? Well, yeah, probably no. no. But I would, would I recognize the concepts? You'd recognize like, I know the that concept from other of stuff. it. Okay. And I'd recognize cool. jetpacks, right? Yeah, you recognize jetpacks. Mm. And the stormtrooper ones, which I, I think they've appeared in Rebels or a variation they're the very first early design of Boba Fett, which was going to be like an elite stormtrooper. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's, like, it's basically a white Boba Fett. A, a Ralph McQuarrie design. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's a moment where Din Djarin has to fight through a series of – it's like those Darth Maul laser doors. Okay. And he's doing them like one at a time. Yeah, right. Going uh-huh. through, I, I like that. Oh, sounds like a daredevil hallway fight. It is a bit like that. There's, there's As a, good? No. That's there's a, a lot of like scrapping – like he's scrapping on the ground. He slips and he kicks out someone's knee and – and whatever. Okay. This series should also be called And Then There Was a Big Monster. Because oh, yeah, no. every now and then it'll be like, And Then There Was a Big Monster. And a big yeah. monster goes, Rah. Happened like four fucking times this oh, season. Okay. And, and that's fairly par for the course. Yeah, but it happened a lot. And okay. there was there, also one of them early on. The, the very first episode, I think it's the first episode or one of the early ones, opens with one of the kids taking on the Mandalorian Oath and they're standing on the edge of a lake. Mm-hmm. And a giant. The Mandalothian. Mandalothian. Mm-hmm. And a giant. Dinosaur, yes, a giant crocodile-sized dinosaur uh-huh. comes out of the river, okay. and they fight it, uh-huh. and then the Malan- Mandalorian flies in, and he shoots it with his ship, and then he lands, and they're like, "What are you doing here?" And he's like, oh, "I came to help." And they're like, "You broke your oath. We talked about this in the the previous, previous season. season. That's Th- right. I'm self-aware. <laughs> You're not, but I am. I know what we're doing here. I'm a minor character that knows I'm in a TV series. <laughs> and then there's, there's a, always got to be one. There's an episode." I think it may be one, maybe two later, but oh. they're standing on the same bank oh, yeah. and a different monster shows up and snatches a kid and flies Whoa. away, right? I wouldn't hang out by that river. I simply wouldn't. Exactly. And so they fly after the monster mm-hmm. and they're like, ah, oh, when we never catch the monster when this happens because we don't have enough fuel. And it's like, how many times is this? There's like fucking 14 of you guys, Put right? Put a fence up. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, be ready for, for when this thing turns Put up. Put up a fence Yeah. So shit like that is like okay, right. what I can see okay. why there's not very many of you. Okay, so w- what what eventually becomes the sort of the plot thrust of? The okay, season? so eventually Moff Gideon, it turns out mm. he's uh he shows up. He's and there's some interesting kind of spy so stuff. Carlo Esposito. Yeah, there's some stuff that I really like where they go back to Coruscant mm-hmm. and they talk about how like um that's the city planet. Correct. Uh, it used to be called Imperial City or something. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe it wasn't. I don't fucking know. Well, I think it was in Legends. I don't know what it is now. That's but, what the title card says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you think. Yeah. And it shows how the New Republic is establishing itself, but it also shows how it's 
going to collapse again because it's caught up in the bureaucracy mm. and the and, and All litiga- those pencil pushes. litigation. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, the one yeah. percent don't really care, yeah, yeah, you know. And yeah. there's also like imperial spies, like among mm, it. Also. Sounds a little political to me. It got a little bit political, but I'm I enjoyed it. Like, and it was there was shades of like Andor in that from kind of visiting that area. Mm. And so I think yeah, the reason why it felt like I think it was also treading waters because. Of course, the the end of season two, Luke Skywalker showed up and goes, that, I'm here, I'm from the original trilogy, and yeah, everybody yeah. fucking cried and lost yeah, their yeah. minds and whatever. He is from the original trilogy. <laughs> I'm that guy from earlier. <laughs> We're all fictional. <laughs> Life's hell. It's a living hell. I, I can be erased at any moment. I don't exist when I'm not on screen. <laughs> uh, I just hide behind that corner <laughs> and I shiver. <laughs> <laughs> so that Luke Skywalker uh, comes back. Yeah. He comes back and... I mean, I know you know this, but then in the book of Boba Fett, they resolved that entire narrative. Yeah. And that should have been in this. Yeah. Because it would have added some weight to them coming back together in the the season, which is about those characters. Right. So then it just felt kind of like a lot of Grogu was just kind of tagging along and whatever for it. Because they're not going to get rid of that character for any length because, you know... People like him and right. sells merch and whatever. There's also a resolution of the dark saber because you know how he gets the dark saber, and yes. Bogatan's like, you can only win the button. The you can only win the boss. You, you can you can win the dark saber if you have a big combat. And then but he did, didn't he? Because he well, he did because he beat Moff Gideon, who she gave it to, or whatever. And, right, and okay. they talk about that. It doesn't uh-huh. matter, but they talk about how that kind of happened. So if you have the dark saber, you're the leader of the Mandalorians. You're leader of the Mandalorians. So then he could change all the rules. There's a, so he's carrying it with him. Uh-huh. There's a moment where he gets captured by like a weird underground crab alien, okay. a Mandalore, and she comes and rescues him, and she uses the dark saber to destroy the creature, and she gives it back to him. Okay. And then he just hangs on to it for three episodes, and then she decides that she's going to um, lead the Mandalorians again. So she goes and finds the other one or whatever who used to work with her and she's like you should come with me and one of them's like you don't even have the dark saber which happened on the guy and I remember a previous episode where you lost the dark saber canonically yeah I know you have to have the dark saber if you want to lead, lead me and then they have a fight or at the very least who does uh, Bo-Katan and-, and that guy basically it's revealed that Din Djarin just goes, oh, yeah, by the way, I lost the Darksaber in a cavern because a, a big crab monster got it from me. And then she picked it up and she defeated the crab monster. But even though she gave it back to me, technically it belongs to her. So she's a leader or whatever. Okay. So he just reveals that like three episodes later. Okay. Which isn't like, it just feels like, oh, yeah, we, nah, well, don't worry about it. We did it. And I felt okay. like maybe that could have been right. resolved in a, in a better way. Oh, sure. I'm guessing. Does it feel like they were initially perhaps they were like, okay, well, the Mandalorian can lead the, all the Mandalorians, but maybe we don't want it to go in that direction, so we'll just have him yeah, hand maybe. the sword over. Okay. Potentially, yeah. I also think they might be riding him out for a reason, which I'll get to in a moment. Or Pedro Pascal doesn't want to be on set. I that we'll, we'll he's talk already about doing it. another show. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But anyway, so they realize the Moff Gideon has escaped, and that's cool. I'm liking this recap, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Mm. They realize that he's escaped, and they're like, "We got to get this. We got to get this fella because he's yeah. bad. He's bad news or whatever." <laughs> What's his plan? Anyway, they reveal the plan that he's got a bunch of clones, and it's of himself. Okay, great. And that's been the that's a callback to like the first season where he's working on cloning, and he wants to get DNA mm. from Grogu and whatever. Yeah, you yeah, probably yeah, remember yeah. that, but you don't have to. Uh huh. Because there's a moment where he's DNA. Yes, <laughs> there's a moment where uh, the Mandalorian just pushes a bunch of buttons, and they all explode and whatever. Nice. So he goes and he goes, oh, I don't like this, and he pushes the buttons, they all fucking nice. explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push the exploding clone buttons. Over here. Exactly, right? Okay, great. And then he goes out and Moff Gideon puts on his Boba Fett clone armor. Which Did is he like, have that already? Yeah, he built it. And it's Was like it in a previous season? It's Beskar because he set, I forgot to mention this, but he set up his base on Mandalore and he's been hiding. That's where he's been hiding. Oh, nice. So there's an Imperial base on Mandalore. Mm-hmm. And that's a kind of a cool reveal because when they land there to kind of retake it and find the old Mandalorians, they run into a cave and they're ambushed and they go deeper into the cave. And all they should of them- stop going to these caves. I they agree. get ambushed, they lose their sword to a crab. <laughs> <laughs> he falls out of the water that one time, which people are like, I know, because we uh, put up a short uh, uh-huh. on the on YouTube about how the Mandalorian is an idiot oh, yes. and he maybe shouldn't have walked into the water and I'm still getting people going like, well, actually, he's not an idiot and you're an idiot. There was supposed to be stairs there and there wasn't. But also, like, I don't know why I'm defending my decision. Check for so. stairs. Check for fucking stairs. The whole thing is falling down. Yeah, Fuck, yeah. Jesus. He yeah. is an idiot. But that's also the point of the character. Like, <laughs> I know that. Like, he's good at, like, he's, he's good in a quick draw, yeah, yeah, but, but he can't fight. He doesn't know peripheral. He doesn't know what the fuck's happening half the time. Mandalorian is the reason why so many places have those weird warning signs. Exactly. Like, check the depth of the pool before you jump in the pool. Remember when he got beat up by a bunch of fucking Jawas? Like, yeah, he's yeah. a moron, and that's okay. <laughs> he's an idiot. Whatever. Anyway. Okay, all the clones get exploded. All the clones. There's like 12 or whatever. Ex-clone. 
Pl- plone. And they're force sensitive. And then Moff Gideon Ooh. turns up and he's like, "Is Moff Gideon force sensitive? No, but is it because he got his DNA? He put the Grogu DNA. Yeah, because he's making versions of himself. So he's part Grogu. These guys, these clones are. I don't know. They just look like him. Okay, but they're dead. How do they figure out they're cl- force sensitive? Well, they figure out they're force sensitive because when he faces Din Djarin at the end, he goes, "You exploited my clones that were force sensitive." Oh, nice. and I'm like, "Come on, you could have like done that a bit better." Anyway, they have a punch up nice. and. Then um, Bo-Katan comes in and he actually destroys the, the Darksaber. Whoa. And I'm like, good, who cares? But she realises at this point that, and he even says this to her, that, like, I don't follow you because you've got a sword. I think you're cool and that's why I'm following you and that's why everybody will probably follow you. So even though she got, def- she got the thing broken... Mm. Also, he breaks it because he's wearing an exo armour because he's got a super suit on. Okay. But his hands aren't super, but he just it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway... Yes. He dies in a big explosion. Moff, but, Moff Gideon. Yeah, but Grogu uses the – he blocks the fire. He, he stops them in a force bubble. Hell There's yeah. also some like, – like those red Imperial guards that they beat oh, up a bunch yeah, of times yeah, yeah. and they're cool. They're always good to see. And then they – she's like, I'm, I'm the winner and I'm the boss. <laughs> and he goes back to uh, the planet of the guy from Creed and he gives Mando. him – Mando. 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 Ah, Mando. Who I love. And he IG eleven is back, and also oh Grogu has yeah. is in IG eleven. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. He rides around yeah. in it, but it gets yeah. destroyed. And then they live in a little house together. Okay. And and he's like, well, I'm gonna. And he goes and sees the the Rebel Alliance or the new guys. And he's like, if you ever need me, you can pay me money, and I'll come and shoot some dudes for you. Nice. And he's like, all right, cool. Nice. And does anybody turn around and it's CGI Han Solo? Or <laughs> no, it's none that's of that. A, that's a shame. And he never takes his helmet off, right? Mm, right. And every season he has taken his helmet off, but apparently it was a scheduling thing because of The uh, the Last of Us. Mm-hmm. But the thing with that is, at this point, if you don't see his face every now and then, he just feels like an emotionless dude just wandering around. Mm. And it's so very clearly not Pedro Pascal yes. that there's this, I find that there's this real disconnect mm. and you need that reminder that this is a famous man right. and a character. Because uh-huh. otherwise you don't... You don't mm. get that. I'm, I'm, I guess I'd be also okay if they left the helmet on up until this point, maybe even. Yeah, right. But the fact that they've taken it off in multiple seasons and this season, it does feel like 80 yard, whatever. Yeah, he's, right. he's obviously like not in this show like at mm. all because there was also a thing about they wanted to pay him as a voice actor in the first season. Oh, I see. And he was like, well, no, I'll show my face and then you can actually pay me properly, please. That would be great. Yeah, right. And so the way this wraps up, I feel like because he's doing Last of Us and he's probably getting so many other opportunities, we are going to see this character. But I I don't know in what, I don't know how much or if he is going to take his helmet off at yeah. all anymore. And I just feel like at this point you need that. And it's also he's past the point and so are a lot of people because they talk about how like every Mandalorian is different and the Mandalorians who take the helmet off, they're okay, and the ones who don't take the helmet off, they're okay. Is that why Bo-Katan can... Yeah, she does whatever. But he also, she also takes the, the Mandalorian creed at one point, so she leaves her helmet on because she's in the water at the same time uh-huh. as him. And then later she meets the armorer who people thought was going to betray them because there's an episode called The Spies and it seems like she's conveniently not the places where she's supposed to be when the okay. things happen. Anyway, it ends up being nothing. She's yeah, not a spy. She was just down the shops. She was just down the shops. And then she's like, Bo-Katan, you took the thing, didn't you? You took the creed with your helmet on? Bo-Katan's like, yeah. And then she's like, well, now you're one of us. And then like the end of the episode, she's like, yeah, just take your fucking helmet off. Who cares? Right. This is really good. <laughs> so, this is good. This cult seems weird and inconsistent. Yeah, it is. But the re- the point of that being is like the armor I wanted to make clear to the, like all Mandalorians, even if you've got a weird creed where you have mm. to wear a helmet, you can't say anything and you keep slipping around. Or your Apollo creed. Yeah, or your Apollo creed. You can be whatever. And I think also they should have locked in Pedro Pascal to actually be in these episodes helmetless for, for a lot of it. Because yeah, again, right. it just feels like... There's no main character yeah. in his stories a lot of the time. What if maybe like when he went to fight that crab or whatever and it took the Darksaber, yeah. what if it knocked his helmet off and he had to wear like a scarf cool. or his face or something? That would that'd, be, that'd cool. be cool. And then you could see his eyes yeah. and be like, oh, okay. Something. But I guess he b- was busy. He was busy. Yeah. And like there's a moment even at the air, in the second last episode and then he gets captured and Grogu saves him in the little IG-11 <laughs> robot. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, the last episode will be the bit where they capture him and they take the helmet off and go on. See, your creed's worthless and you're an idiot. And then he yeah. uh, and then he's like, it's not, I'm not about the creed. I'm about doing I'm about family. Thing. I'm about using this flamethrower I have. And That's right. Whatever. That I forgot I had for most of this season. <laughs> and the guy's like, he's getting it. <laughs> he's realizing he's not real. But yes. Yeah, so <laughs> but he does use the flamethrower quite a bit. Yeah, hell yeah. But overall, I would even say, like, I lo- it's fine. Like, I like right, it. Okay, it's cool. fun and I like Star yeah. Wars for the most part, even bad Star Wars. Maybe I'll watch the Jack Black Lizzo episode. Yeah. And, you know, it's. I think it resolved a lot of animated stuff, which 
you know, people were looking to see. And I think it, it it's interesting the way it is going to ramp up in, into like Ahsoka and Thrawn. And mm. then they're going to have a scene where everybody's de-aged from the original trilogy. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what's in the movie or whatever. It's really interesting that there are so many, like I would consider very interesting characters in this, like Ahsoka are, and yeah. Bo-Katan. Just actors I like, characters I like, Mandalorian, you know, the, the de-aged original series cast or whatever. But I'm like, yeah, well, maybe I'll yeah. watch an episode. And where Andor, like, you know, I think Andor also, like, seeing that and then this, it makes you go, okay. And especially because this season is very clearly not as strong as the previous two. But also at the same time, I, you know, I'm ordinarily a fan of just a fun series with shooting yeah. action and characters that are but that maybe that's it because I you know I'll watch anything that has fun action and also compelling characters that I like seeing on the screen mm. and perhaps it's a part of that that you never see him on the screen yeah so that's not that's compelling it. you yep. know exactly you can only trade on that like strong silent type for a while before you're like is there anybody in that yeah <laughs> have they just propped that suit against a wall <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go get Grogu back, but I'm going to do it while leaning against this wall. <laughs> we cut to the Imperial base. Oh, my God, it's the Mandalorian. It's just a suit against. <laughs> They've propped the gun up with a yeah, stick. That's right, I am here. Yeah, Don't make right. me use my flamethrower, which I have. That's right. Better surrender. He's going to use his flamethrower. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Mandalorian. Oh, I'm so glad I rescued you, and now we're relaxing on the beach, Grogu, and it's just he's just the suit swinging in a hammock. <laughs> hammock yeah. But he falls out and it's just a broom. It's just a broom. It's just a broom with a watermelon <laughs> on top. And a seagull comes down and starts pecking the watermelon. <laughs> anyway, like it's pretty fun. Yeah. And like and they learn to work together and they unite oh, that's great. Mandalorians and whatever. But it does feel like the end, the end of his story for now. Okay. And the next story will be a different thing, or he'll be pared down a bit. Do you feel like because a lot of people have said, oh, this, you know, some Star Wars these days is just the creators smashing action figures together. I guess a little bit, but this, uh, the stuff that it draws upon is mm-hmm. like there's a, like Zeb is in it from Rebels. Zeb from Rebels? Zeb, Zebels. Zebels Rebel. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a few like, oh, and that character in the Bo Katan and whatever. So it's more like peripheral characters. Right. Well, they're not peripheral in their own series. Okay, yeah. It feels more like that than like, Princess, no one's peripheral yeah, in their own Princess series. Leia is here to use Darth Maul's lightsaber to whatever, you know. It's not, oh, like, hell it's yeah. not like that. Well, uh, But it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Does it feel like then that, is it Filoni and Favreau? Does yeah. it feel like they're like, well, we're moving on to the next thing. It does feel a bit so like we'll that, just, yeah. So we'll just toss this one aside, and I'm sure which like, is disappointing. Yeah, I'm sure like, and you see that in, I think, some episodes of Rebels where he was moving away to work on other stuff. Right. But, you, yeah, it does feel like that. We're going in other directions and we need to get ready for that and kind of pare this down a bit. Right. You know, and whatever. Again, I know it sounds like for me to come out at the end and go, yeah, it was fine. It's very after, rich if you just come in and say yeah, that, James. After, after saying all that. But that's just, yeah. that's how I, it's, it's not like offensive, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> right. yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's, they all work together. And they work together to beat up that guy at the end and they survived the explosion because they worked as a team and he didn't survive. Or he did because maybe he wasn't the real one or yeah, a clone. Yeah, he wasn't the real one. Or, the, or there's a Look, clone of him I comes do back. know this. All I, all I'm, all I know uh, based on some some various Twitter screenshots and so forth, previous seasons Moff Gideon had a mustache. Yeah. And this one doesn't, doesn't have, have a mustache. mustache. And the clones don't have mustaches. Yeah. So the this, this suggestion is that the that Moff Gideon is, is a clone himself because he hasn't had time to grow that mustache. That's something to think about. That's right, yes. Ask your parents. Yeah. They'll know. I will. <laughs> da- hey, Dad, i got some questions about Moff Gideon. Uh, should we move it along? Yes. Do you want to do some? <laughs> do you? I do. Let's do it. All right. 